Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jordan here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. All right, so today I want to talk about a brand new lens that I picked up. Um, I think probably even if you have a mirrorless system like I do for Canon, it's definitely still probably worth looking into if you just want to adapt rather than spending a lot more money on RF glass specifically. So let's go ahead and get into it. So today I want to talk to you about the Tamron 70 to 210 millimeter f/4. Now, granted, it's an f/4; it's not an f/2.8. So the f/4 was 600. If you wanted to get a little bit more, um, I think the f/2.8 it was like around 12. So if you have the budget for the f/2.8, I would probably go that route. If you want the 2.8 f/4, to me, I think is perfectly fine, especially for a lot of like street photography. Um, I think portraits, it should be okay. Uh, I would like to test it out. I don't think I'll ever get the opportunity to anytime soon. Um, I even used it on some astrophotography. I just went outside just to mess with it and it still worked perfectly fine. So now I'm going to get into the pros here. The first one on the list is image stabilization or VC as Tamron likes to call it. Uh, I believe it's vibration control, which is what the VC stands for. But basically, for 600 bucks, you get image stabilization. Um, it works really well. I, I will say that there is something that you have to go into. Um, you have to purchase the Tamron Tap End console separately, but you go into the Tamron Tap End console application on your computer, and then you have to change the VC from, I think it's like standard to optical something. Um, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it actually helps produce a more stable image. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, along with image stabilization, you'll also get autofocus. I would think for 600 bucks, you should get at least one of those two items. Uh, the autofocus is good. Uh, I did another video before this one. I was comparing the, the Canon 75 300 to the Tamron 70 to 210. And there's a few times in there that I mentioned that the autofocus wasn't like accurate, but upon further review, just going through the lens and just messing around with it a lot more, I actually found that the autofocus is actually spot on. So I, if you watch that video, just just to regard that, because I thought that the um, autofocus coming from BH when I had it shipped and maybe got messed up. So just keep that in mind. Now. The Tamron is ultra sharp. Uh, at first, when I first got it, I was comparing it to some of the pictures I was doing with the 75 to 300 from the Canon. Um, just taking it out and messing around with it. Uh, so, at 210 millimeters with the Tamron compared to at 210 millimeters with the Canon EF, the Tamron just knocks it out of the park. Um, I was doing 70 millimeter tests inside my house and those two kind of look similar so that's why I wasn't really like 100% sold on it. Um, so basically when I was going outside I was just messing around with it and at 210 millimeters it's still tack sharp. It's an ultra sharp lens. Uh, for 600 bucks comparatively if you bought the Canon EF 70 to 200 f4 for $600, you wouldn't get image stabilization. So I think that's probably right on par with that lens. Um, so just keep that into consideration. If you are looking at the Canon EF 70 to 210 or the 70 to 200, you might just be better off with going over the Tamron and adapting it. So F4 all the way through 70. So aperture wise, you get F4 from 70 to 210 millimeters. Fantastic. Um, I have noticed that it's a little bit more soft than the Canon 70 to 300 that I have. So at 210 millimeters on the Canon, I think it's like a five, like an F5 for aperture. Um, 
still super soft in the background for that F4. So I have used the Tamron on all three of my systems, the T7, the SL3, and the EOS RP. Adapting it to the EOS RP with the EF to RF adapter. All work perfectly fine. I still get autofocus and all that stuff with the Tamron. And so surprisingly, when I upload my images from the EOS RP into Lightroom, the Tamron actually registers through the adapter better than the Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter does. So a few more pros with this lens. Um, so internal zoom, uh, the internal zoom is nice. Uh, it does add a lot of extra weight and it also adds a lot of extra length to the lens. Now the Canon is a little bit more compact, uh, especially at 75 millimeters. So just take that into consideration. Um, if you need something that's a lot more compact, the Tamron might not be the best option, but if you're adapting it to the RF mounts for like the EOS R, the RP, R5, R6, I mean, they're coming out with a lot of the 70 to 200 compact RF 200s. Uh, if you have the budget for those, I mean, that's probably what you want to look at, but I don't have a problem with this one. I, I kind of knew what I was getting into when I purchased it. You do also get a lens hood that comes with the lens itself. Uh, I haven't ever really used lens hoods before now, but I'm kind of understanding why the uh, manufacturers kind of recommend those. And the lens itself is also a moisture resistant. Uh, I don't plan on checking that out at all, um, but I'm just going to take Tamron's word for it. So I went through the aperture ranges on the Tamron. So I went from 70 and then I went to 210 because I just wanted to kind of like check the apertures through these. So I can say this much at F4, the center of the images are sharp. Um, you definitely get soft corners and vignetting at 70 millimeters. And there is some purple fringing at an F4 at 70 millimeters. Now going all the way up to a, an F5, you get a little bit more sharpness all around. Purple fringing, so at an F6.3, you get a lot better sharpness all around. And then the purple fringing is pretty much gone. Uh, at a 7.1, the vignette is gone. You get greater sharpness all around and all of the color fringing is gone. At 70 millimeters at an f16 is when all of the softness from diffraction kicks back in to the lens and then it basically just goes from there. The maximum aperture is an f32. Now at 210 millimeters it's pretty much the same thing. You get softness all around. Uh, you definitely get a pin cushion distortion at uh, 210 millimeters and then you do also still have vignette and that pretty much stays all the same up until f5.6 where you get a sharper center and sharper corners at about f9 the vignette starts to disappear and then so i actually noticed that an f18 softness from diffraction starts to kick back in at 210 millimeters um, basically anything past f16 from 70 through 210, uh, you don't notice any added sharpness from stopping down, so just keep that in mind. Now, I just wanna get into some of the cons of this lens. So, take it into consideration when you're purchasing this lens, but to me, these were a few of the cons. Maybe you should have done a little bit more research on the lens, but that's what you get when you just kind of like press the order button and wait for it to ship. So first con is it's pretty heavy. Uh, you're looking at a pound and 15 ounces on the camera body system without the lens hood. Now with the lens hood, you're pushing it just at two pounds. It's also pretty bulky. So in total, it's seven inches long without the lens hood, the lens cap or the rear cap on the lens itself. Uh, when you put the lens hood on, it's nine and a half inches long. Uh, three inches wide, so comparatively to the Canon 75 to 300, the Canon is five inches long, closed, seven and basically seven and a half fully extended, and two and a half inches wide. So just take that into consideration. Now, the Canon, 
75 to 300 it's a decent lens it doesn't have image stabilization it's basically the same one that you get with all the kits uh, f4 to f5.6 so take it into consideration if you are purchasing or looking for the Tamron you're probably looking at this because you want to step up from something like that uh, something that I absolutely hate is Tamron sells you the tripod collar so the little collar that goes around the lens so this way you can mount it to like a tripod uh, they sell those separately, 129 bucks. I think that's kind of a ripoff, but that's just me. Um, if I can find a like off-brand one, like a Velo or something, I'll keep you guys posted when I do like my six month or my year review. So just something to keep in mind. Another downside to this too is you have to purchase the Tamron tap and console. That is an extra $60. Um, the tripod collar is 130. So, I mean, right there, you're spending almost an extra 200 bucks just to get a 70 to 210. I'm not sure if Sigmas come with the tripod collar for their like 70 to 210s or 70 to 200s or 70 to 300s, but just something to consider. Now, this took me like a little while to get used to. Um, I mean, I played with it for the first day I got it, so. Within a couple hours, I was kind of getting the hang of it, but so the Tamron lens actually focuses and zooms oppositely from like what I'm used to on my Canon lenses. So I, at first I kept trying to turn it, you know, the way that the Canon lenses focus and zoom and uh, it just took me a minute to get used to. So just something to consider. So to me, this is a downside. All of the lens filters that I own are 58 millimeter. The filter thread size on this lens is 67 millimeters. Uh, I can't use a step up ring or a step down ring just because all of the lens filters that I have are 58 and you'll probably get some sort of like a weird circle vignette on those. So I have to purchase new filters for that lens specifically. Now, this is just something to consider. Um, so it's roughly around 850 ish if you buy it new with the tap in console and the tripod collar now if you're going for the tamron f4 and you're buying the tripod collar and the tap in console i mean if you spend a couple extra hundred bucks you can get the canon 70 to 200 l series f4 with image stabilization now that's entirely up to you if you want to spend the extra money just to get the Canon EF 70 to 200. So at that price, it's $1,099. So basically 1100 bucks. Uh, I mean, if you're willing to spend 1100 bucks, you could probably just spend a little bit more and get the Tamron F 2.8 70 to 210. So something to consider just weighing your options. So basically, just to conclude this video, I mean, out of all the cons that it has with having to purchase the tripod collar, the tap and console, the weight, the size of the lens, um, so far I've pretty much fell in love with it. I mean, it's pretty much on my camera right now, 24 seven. I'm just using it as much as I possibly can just to learn the ins and outs of the lens. Uh, it's a good lens though. I mean if you're looking to step up from like a, a cheaper DSLR camera lens like the one that I have the Canon 75 to 300 It's definitely an upgrade now Would I say that you should go out and buy this just because you have the 75 to 300? I would say no and the only reason for that is, is unless you absolutely need the extra sharpness and the less uh, color fringing and chromatic aberration that the Canon lens has. I mean, so do you really want to spend 600 bucks for image stabilization, uh, less chromatic aberration and less color fringing? I mean, that's entirely up to you. You're losing out on 90 millimeters of focal length at that point. Um, but you're gaining f4 through 70 to 210 millimeters now If you're doing more professional work, I would say yes This is definitely an upgrade from that especially like if you were just using the 70 to 300 To get your foot, you know, like kind of like get your foot in the door and just get you by for a little while So just take it with a grain of salt um, 
would I say upgrade it if you don't need it like for like professional work? Probably not. I mean, save the money in the long run, you'll thank me. You know, you could probably find a Canon L series lens for a little bit cheaper used. Um, but that's entirely up to you. If you're looking to upgrade from like a cheaper lens to this one, I highly recommend it. But if you don't actually need to upgrade, uh, I would say maybe just stay away from it. Save your 600 bucks, buy lights, buy a second camera body, buy more batteries, tripods, whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's just my opinion. Just take it as it is. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, also give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.